The April jobs report comes out and the US economy is worse off than we could have predicted. We do a deep dive into why this is happening, the future of cities in the United States, as well as the future of both the Republican and the Democratic parties. Uh, these stories and more on your May 11th not so news update. Please like and subscribe if you're looking for daily news content and let's dive on in. Uh, starting us off, come from the Wall Street Journal, U.S. employers add 266,000 jobs in April as hiring slows. Hiring in the U.S. Unexpected, unexpectedly slowed in April, a sign of the nation's recovery from the pandemic still faces challenges as many businesses struggle to find workers or remain cautious about the economic outlook. U.S. employers added a modest 266,000 jobs in April. A report Friday by the Labor Department showed far short of the 1 million that economists had forecast and the weekly monthly gains into January. The declaration came after payrolls rose a downwardly revised 70, 770,000 in March and left total employment down by 8.2 million from its pre-pandemic level. The unemployment rate ticked um, up to 6.1% in April from 6% a month earlier, uh, partially reflecting an increase in people's entering the workforce. Um, higher vaccination rates, fiscal stimulus, and easing business restrictions are converging to support stronger spending across the U.S., but an economy emerging from pandemic-related disruptions is also encountering restraint on job gains, broader economic activity, as imbalances in supply and demand for goods, services, and labor play out. So this makes us wonder, what are the main reasons for why the job market is still not that strong? <clears throat> You'll notice they actually don't talk about jobs much in this Wall Street Journal. They talk specifically about supply and demand of goods towards the end. Um, and in my opinion, that's the wrong conversation to be having with these types of discussions, uh, particularly because with all the extra stimulus we've done throughout COVID, there we really can't use the basic supply and demand for saying how much a job is worth anymore. You know, we, we can kind of imagine like, let's say, uh, you know, you pay a dollar for, I don't know, your quart of milk or whatever, um, and the government increases the supply of money to, you know, 50% more than its uh, pre-pandemic level. Now that ga that price of milk, with you getting, you know, next to no um, increase in your take-home pay, is now $1.50. Um, and, you know, most co companies out there do some type of uh, raises yearly to kind of, like, offset um inflation i have a hard time believing that many of the jobs are going to be giving you know something even close to the amount of extra spending that has been happening as a result of covid um the market watch does a similar um uh, interpretation of the job numbers u.s jobs recovery reveals two very different americas um they actually go into the racial uh divide um in, in their article which more while millions of people were laid off last year many white collar workers were able to work from home the Labor Department said uh, just 18.3% of people employed were teleworking in April, down from 21% the previous month. Uh, for all the anal anal analysis devoted to working from home and maintaining a work-life balance is an option open to um, precious few workers. Another sign of two Americas, black unemployment rate rose slightly to 9.7% versus 5.3% for whites, making black workers the only racial and ethnic group as a whole to experience worsening metrics, according to Elise uh, Gould, senior economist with Economic Policy institute of progressive thinking clearly these two groups are experiencing a very different labor market others left out of the job group temporary workers as shops and restaurants reopen it looks as if a lot of delivery and temporary help uh, services jobs vanish brian colton chief economist at flitch rating said the small rise in the unemployment rate along with the downward revisions to job gains in march emphasize just how far away we are from regaining full employment um, so I want to mainly hit on this uh, racial disparity between the 9.7% to 5.3% for whites, 9.7% um, for black unemployment. Um, and if we kind of, you know, do this as a mirroring of how we expect jobs to be if we look at specifically cities versus rural areas, in my opinion, this is actually a good sign for Republican um, individuals that, you know, the areas that are doing the best right now are going to be your predominantly white areas, which are predominantly going to be suburban uh, rural areas, which are, in my opinion, the biggest group that uh, the GOP needs to re-win uh, back, which is that suburban uh, white female vote that they traditionally got and have seemed to loss uh, with Trump. Um, obviously, 2024 is a bit away, but there are the 2022 midterm elections, um, and I think the jobs market is going to be the biggest issue when it comes to the 2022 elections. 
Um, coming from New York Magazine, uh, the Intelligencer, five explanations for April's bad job reports. Uh, they give five potential uh, reasons for why um, the, the the job market numbers are you know terrible. Um, remember, just for when we're comparing these two, we added two hundred sixty six thousand jobs in. Um, April, they were expecting a one million dollar number or a one million number. That means they were twenty five percent of what they thought they would be. Only in the government can you get paid for having a, a number seventy five percent off. Um, but regardless, enhanced um, uh, UI benefits have led workers to hold out for better terms than employers are willing to provide. Um, this is one of the big issues that we saw with giving so much extra benefits, um, specifically with unemployment. Um, and you know kind of if you think about it this way let's say you get ten dollars an hour um for you know unemployment and you can work at your mcdonald's for twelve dollars an hour if you think about it you're actually working for mcdonald's for two dollars an hour with that kind of mindset um obviously we need to have some type of incentive out there for people to get work um the second issue that they bring up schools and daycares haven't fully opened this is keeping many mothers from returning to the labor force obviously this pushes at how big of an issue it is to get schools open how much of an issue it is to get daycares open specifically when we're in a time where the cdc has said that it is safe for schools to reopen uh, number three supply and chain bottlenecks are uh, constraining production in sub key industries um they specifically say this is only about eighteen thousand jobs so obviously it's not the underlying um, issue. Uh, next, they say the government's seasonal adjustment formula must be obsolete in the age of COVID. Um, this is what gave the $1 million number, um, or sorry, the 1 million uh, jobs number. So obviously this isn't a big issue, uh, specifically when we still see the um, unemployment is still a um, at a, a reasonably high level. Uh, finally, it takes time for a labor market to recover from a pandemic that has not actually ended. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the, they're, they're saying the pandemic hasn't actually ended. As far as I'm concerned, everyone has been given a, the um, access to the vaccine that desires it. Um, in my opinion, the only reason to keep any type of industry shut down, any type of environment shut down, is either political in-group signaling or you're an anti-vaxxer. Um, and I think it's time to, you know, kind of flip the script on what it means to be anti-vax. Um, I think it's just as much anti-vax to say that individuals need to be wearing masks uh, 24 seven um, as it is to say that the vaccine doesn't do anything. Um, it's either we got to pick between the vaccine works or it doesn't. Coming from the Daily Wire, Biden, no evidence people aren't working due to government benefits and they, sorry, and they better not be doing it. Uh, this is in reference to um, all the new benefits that are um, coming out for unemployment um, and how that, uh, the example we just gave with the McDonald's, you know, you're actually only getting $2 to work um, and how Biden uh, responded to this type of comment. Uh, during his remarks on Monday, Biden appeared to give conflicting remarks about what was really going on. He suggested that receiving um, of generous government benefits was not the reason that people were refusing to return to work. He also repeatedly stated that people who are on government benefits must return to work if they are offered a job. We're going to make it clear that anyone collecting unemployment who is offered a suitable job must take that job or lose their unemployment benefits, Biden said. There are few COVID-19 related exceptions so that people aren't forced to choose between their basic safety and a paycheck, but otherwise that's the law. I know there's been a lot of discussion since Friday's report that people are being paid to stay home rather than go to work. Well, we don't see much evidence of that. We don't see that. Look, it's easy to say the line has been because of the generous unemployment benefits. That is a major factor in labor shortages. Americans want to work, Biden claimed. I think the people who claim Americans won't work, even if they find a good and fair opportunity, underestimate the American people. So we'll insist that the law is followed with respect to benefits. We, but we're not going to turn our backs on our fellow Americans. Um, I think the biggest um, you know, critique of this type of argument comes from uh, Biden's O side and someone like AOC with her um, you know, Green New Deal, um, who said that we should be offering um, payment to Americans who are unable or unwilling to work. We have to remember that there is a significant chunk of the current populace that thinks that you should get paid if you are unwilling to work. Um, in my opinion, this just shows just the disconnect between what jobs are actually supposed to do. Jobs at the end of the day are your service to the community in providing some type of service, and as a result, you are then able to survive in that community. Um, I think having any other mindset that, you know, the goal of your job is either to, honestly, I think even just going to a job to accrue wealth isn't actually the right mindset to have, and unfortunately, that's the mindset a lot of individuals, specifically in cities, have. 
Um, looking at this city idea, though, the New York Post had an interesting article today. If you prefer city living over nature, you might be a psychopath study. Uh, this is actually something I've been really relating to. Um, I wouldn't go as far to say uh, this kind of language, um, but... I've noticed the more I've uh, lived in cities, the less happy I am, um, especially with the individuals in cities that just have no like care for their fellow neighbor. They kind of just stay in their own, you know, it's it's like high school cliques all over again. Um, in the article by the New York Post, using a crowdsourcing website, prolific researchers at the University of Derby surveyed 304 UK-based adults on their preferred geographical setting, how connected they feel with nature and their personality type. The re resulting data showed a correlation between socially adverse personality traits like sadism and narcissism and being partial to inner city living. A second study of another 230K UK adults concluded similar results. Psycho psychopathy is inversely associated with nature uh, connectedness. Authors wrote in the study highlight section, noting that high scoring on psychopathy was associated with a preference for inner city living, but did not match a residential history. Their findings are possibly related of big city residents failing to get quality of life improvements that the nature brings to less urban dwellers. So obviously, I don't think this is directly related to, um, you know, COVID or anything. But I, I, I've, this is something I'm convinced is part of the issue that we see with the economy, part of the issue that we see with just, you know, this return to normalcy is we have a significant chunk of the population that doesn't even want to be back to normal. Um, kind of related to these numbers though, um, coming from the post-millennial, Governor DeSantis to sue the CDC for shutting down American businesses during pandemic. On Wednesday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis spoke on his early April announcement that he would be suing the CDC, um, which is the Center for Disease Control, for exceeding its authority in closing American businesses during the COVID-19 pandemic, specifically the cruise line industry, industry that is vital to Florida ports. Do you want one unelected bureaucracy to be able to have the power to indefinitely shut down a major industry in this country, said DeSantis. Speaking on the continued stalling of allowing cruise ships to run again and the avoidance of Florida due to DeSantis' ban on vaccine passports, they do not have that authority to do it. That's what we're suing them. DeSantis pointed out that cruise ships avoiding Florida due to the vaccine passport bans would make no sense, seeing as many uh, places people most commonly cruise to have hive, um, higher COVID rates and lower vaccination rates. Um, I think the main thing here, though, um, that DeSantis hits is this idea of the bureaucracy being able to protect or being able to dictate how individuals are supposed to be living their lives. Um, specifically, these are unelected individuals that live in the D.C. area um, that you know are appointed by. Um, whoever we are, um, you know, in office, you know, you apply for these jobs in the same way you would apply for a, a private sector job. You know, you go on Glassdoor or uh, LinkedIn or where, wherever you're trying to get hired and you apply for the job in the same way as you would in the private industry. These are individuals that get to make dictates like the CDC saying that private businesses need to shut down. It makes absolutely no sense. Um, and I think what's even further a concern is the way that we look up to these types of individuals. Uh, specifically looking at uh, someone like Fauci. Fauci is not an elected official. He should only be reporting to political office the science of um, anything related to COVID specifically. You know, he could go into, you know, how it spreads, uh, how it's developed, stuff like that, but he does not have the expertise to say, um, you know, anything when it comes to how like politics should actually be derived from it instead what we would expect is him to give an estimate for here are the number of deaths you know with policy x um and you know afterwards we can evaluate how good those numbers are um and then we could compare those types of deaths to things like the suicide death alcoholic deaths i think it's really unfortunate that we're a year and a half in and i still have not seen a single study that looks at the number of deaths um you know, as a result of things like alcoholism, um, suicide, that are 100% on the increase as a result of the COVID lockdowns, um, and comparing them to the COVID deaths to even give us some type of sense of confidence that the lockdowns are actually doing a net good. Finally, coming from NBC News, we follow up on a story from last week um, after there was a uh, cybersecurity attack on a pipeline on the East Coast. Biden says there's no evidence of Russian government was um, involved in the pipeline hack. Um, in an article, President Joe Biden said Monday that there was no evidence that the Russian government was involved with the Colonel Pipeline ransomware attack that shut down a major United States fuel pipeline on Friday. 
Um, I'm going to have a conversation. I'm going to be meeting with President Putin, Biden said. And so far, there's no evidence based on from our intelligence people that Russia is involved, although there is evidence that the actor's ransomware is in Russia. They have some responsibility to deal with this. Biden did not say when or where he would meet with Putin, although he has previously said he hoped to meet with the Russian leader in Europe in June. The FBI said Monday that the dark side ransomware, a Russian cybercrime gang referred to by the same name, was responsible for the attack. Um, there's something in here that I'm just very concerned with, is this idea that they have some responsibility to deal with this. Um, unless that idea is in the same way that, you know, we would expect, you know, a American that attacks a foreign um, government to you know give up its citizens to be prosecuted in that foreign state um that would be i i think at the best what the russian responsibility is for this obviously they're saying that this is not coming from the government um but this did hit on something that i was very concerned with is how much we've been talking about infrastructure i have not seen a single conversation when it comes to cyber um infrastructure cyber defense specifically in the military um and i think that's probably the one side of infrastructure that i would want to see some type of increased spending with, you know, protecting all the investments I've had to give in my taxes. And this is your May 11th, not to news update. Once again, please like and subscribe if you're looking for daily news content and have a good one.